everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make, I guess it's a floral envelope, exploding envelope. I'm not too sure. Basically the inspiration has actually come from my mum and she's made this. So she's very kindly allowed me to take this one to show at, you know, at the beginning of this video here and I'm going to recreate one. And I just, as soon as I saw it, hers is for a birthday, but I thought this would be a beautiful Mother's Day card, you know, and it's lovely. Again, anything I find where you can add flowers is a great alternative to take to someone who's in hospital because, you know, most hospitals now you can't take real flowers. So having something like this, again, sat on the side table, I just think it's absolutely stunning. So my mum was asked to make this one from her friend who wants to give it to her mum. So you can see there, she's done this lovely little sign on a wooden stick and it says, for you mum, 75. And then you've got happy birthday there. But the whole thing opens up to form a card. So it's, you know, it's all together there. And I just, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I said, mum, I'm gonna have to copy you. And she was really kind of touched. She said, oh, I love that you're gonna, I've inspired you. So thank you, mum, because I think it's absolutely beautiful. So basically the, the basics of it are a envelope box. So, and then you stick it onto the back here. So I did play around and I was just, you know, testing some other sizes and stuff. Um, and I've done this one here. And I thought oh, I'll try it a bit thinner because really you stick everything, you know, outside. The only thing that's really inside is this little stick and this here, which is just from the pound shop. I've actually got a roll of this as well. And I use it for when I cover, you know, and wrap hampers and things, but it's perfect. And you can just see there, I just cut a piece off. So that's really what goes inside. Sorry, it's quite noisy. What goes inside there, but you can see when it's quite thin, it's a bit too bulky. I can take that down. I'm certainly going to use this, but I just wanted to show you a thinner version. But I think I'm going to go for this thicker version here. So my mum's actually done hers. Hers is three quarters of an inch um, deep. So I'm with those measurements in mind. And it's an A6 size. So it's, um, yeah, it's just under six by four. Sorry, four and a half. Yeah, so A6. And uh, yeah. I just thought let's you know stick with a more thicker size because I think that works well and I think it can stand well because you've got quite a lot of weight and bulk here um it does work better to have it thicker but I will do something that I think I'll probably decorate this with maybe more paper flowers rather than 3d flowers so we'll play around but I'm going to keep that one there okay so I'm going to be using the envelope scoreboard today these are really good you don't just make envelopes with them you can make gift bags you can make embellishments like bows and things like that you can make obviously gift boxes 3d envelopes so you know if you don't have one of these and you're kind of thinking well I don't just want one just to make this card you can do a lot more with them and also if you don't have this just have a little look on YouTube and I'm pretty sure there are loads of videos showing you how to make a 3d box envelope I do have box envelopes on my channel but they are boxes to hold your 6x6 or 5x7 dimensional cards so they're not in this kind of shape they're more of a box with like a flip lid okay so to get the size that I want so near to what mum's done there you want a piece of cardstock that is eight and seven eighths of an inch squared okay and then we're going to use our stylus here and I'm following the five bar which is the four by five and a half here so it's saying the first score line, it's ignore this, the paper size there because basically I've gone by that, but I've added an inch. So that's seven and seven eighths. This is eight and seven eighths. But your score line is at three and three eighths. So I'm going to pop this in. You're going to run this along here to it's at three and three eighths. Okay. Punch and score. Don't worry if the stylus doesn't go all the way down. Get it as close to the edge as you can. If you've got one of the newer ones, like the one, two, three punch, they will have the extender arm. So, you know, that's not a problem. Then what you want to do is shift this along to four and three eighths. So all the way along to four and three eighths. And again, punch and score. Okay. So we've created one of the long sides. Now, what I would usually do is flip it and then work on the opposite side. But because I don't want to score on the other long side, I want that to stay completely score free because it's the piece that stands up. So you don't want to weaken it by adding score lines, which we're not going to end up needing. So what I'm going to end up doing, so we've just done that, is I'm now going to rotate it to the ends of these score lines, pop them in here. And you're now going to use this piece here, which is the score guide, line it up with the first score line, punch and score, and then move it along until it lines up with the second score line. So it will actually cross over with the one you've just done. So again, punch and score. 
Okay, so now we've created one of the sides and one of the long sides. So again, we don't want to touch this opposite end to the longer one. So now we want to go around to here. So what you're going to do is pop it in on the sides. You'll have a side where you've got score lines. You'll have two sides where you've got notches and then you'll have one where you've got nothing. Put that side in, but now you're going to focus on this line and this area here. And you just want to bring it along until the, the corner here meets up with the score line here. So just put your stylus in there so that corner is, you know, sits right by it. And then punch and score. And the score line will join up perfectly there, meeting this top of this score line here. And then just slide it along again until this one sits within that score line. And again, punch. And when you score, it will join up perfectly with the corner there. And that's everything. So if I just move that out of the way, you can see, oh, sorry, and then, because <laughs> now we've, we need to just add the notches into there. So you've got notches there, here, and here, but you need to add them into that piece. So just pop it in here, line up this with any of the score lines, so this one first or that one, it really doesn't matter, and just punch it. You're not doing any scoring, you're just punching, like so. So now we've done it. So if I just get rid of all these pieces, if I just lay that down, you can see what you've got. So you'll have this whole big area here, which if I come and lay mum's card on top, sits perfectly in there, like so. Okay, so you'll have that where we're going to be, you know, doing a lot of our detail, and then you'll have score lines on these sides here. So now you just want to fold and burnish those score lines. Okay, and then we need to do a little bit of cutting. So again, you've got your large area there. We're working on the bottom, the opposite end. You're just going to cut up just to kind of loose, well, loosen, but free up that so it becomes a tab. And again, just cut straight down to that, that kind of first score line. Tidy up the edges just so everything stays nice and straight. And then what you can do is just take off a little bit of that kind of end there. Like so. so. Again, if I just oops, just lay that down and see what I've just done there. Okay, so you're just freeing them up. Now the opposite ones here, we're just going to cut away completely. Okay, so again, I'm going to lay that down, but that's now what you should have. Okay, so then if you bring up the sides and bring up the base, there is our envelope, but with the top part staying upright. And again, if I just lay this down next to it, you can see there, I think mum's might be a little bit taller. Yeah, hers comes up a little bit higher, but that should hopefully be enough for when we fold our A4 in half. Yeah, we will be able to make our card base. Okay, so that's where you need to be right now. Okay, now I want to, I want to add some mats and layers, well, just mats to mine. So I've got this really nice pattern paper, which is from this one here. Is this one here? Yeah, which is the watercolour feelings from Craft Sensations. I shared these a few weeks ago in one of my What Did I Get videos from the range, and they were 2 99 I think. Gorgeous, it's got foiling running through it, but I've used this one here. It does also have foiling in it. They do one where it's kind of matte, and then there's the same one with the foiling through. But I thought I'm going to just go with this one for the minute, because there's going to be so much going on, I didn't want to go too over the top. But what I'm thinking to do is I'm laying this on the top here, and you can see I've got this border, about a quarter of an inch. Maybe not quite. Maybe do I want to have a little bit more? Maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit more. There you go, that's more like a quarter of an inch. And then what I'm going to do is with my pencil, so I'm just going to add a pencil mark there. So again, for anybody that can't really see what I'm doing here, the actual measurement that this will be is eight and a half inches squared. All right, so let's get that cut first. Right, so now if I sit that inside this piece, you can see I've got a nice yellow border, okay? So now I'm gonna punch and score that piece the same way, all right? But this time, it's just a bit smaller. So I would also say that you want a pattern that isn't directional, so something where the pattern's just all over the place because you're working with you know, angles and triangle shapes, it's easier to have something that will just work no matter which way you turn it. So I'm just going to lay this down in here because it should still work the same way as before. So let me just check there. Yeah, so you just want to punch at three and three eighths of an inch. Punch and score. 
and go right the way down on that piece. And then I'm going to move it along to four and three eighths, punch and score. Okay. Then I'm going to, because I don't, I want to keep that piece again as one nice piece in the centre because I'm going to use it inside the card. So I'm going to have it all here or even here and then have a white piece where I can stamp and write my message. So that's the long side. So then I'm just going to work with the short side. So again, it's hard for you to see the pattern here, but I'm just using this piece here. So just line it up with that first score line, punch and score. Revert back, to just rewind the video if you you know, are thinking, well, I can't see this, Sam, because I appreciate it. It's hard for you to see, but I'm just doing it exactly the same process as I've done before. So now I've got that long end with the score lines and one of the short ends. Again, I don't want to do that opposite end. So I'm now going to go around to here and I'm going to focus down in this corner, just as I did before. And then bring this one along. And this is how I think you'll get really nice mats to fit. And this final one, I just need to just punch. I don't want to score. So again, now if I remove all of that, bring this piece back in. I'm going to fold and burnish all these score lines and then I'm just going to cut it all apart and use these pieces to mat the yellow. Okay, so now you can see on this side the same. So again, if I sit this over the top, you can see how it fits inside there, like so. But this time what you want to do is just cut away, so let me grab my longer scissors. If I go this way up, I'm just going to cut this one. In fact, I think I'm going to use my trimmer. Just so you get a nicer finish, I'm just going to pop this in here and just line up that one there. So, the idea is that We'll go on there. Actually, no, you're going to have to bring it down. So we'll take a little bit off in a minute. So let's just go, it's still working fine. So let's just take all of these ends off. Okay, so let me just lay this down so you can see what I've done. So we've got like that. And then I've removed these pieces completely. Okay, so you're going to get rid of these, you'll have that whole big piece which we're going to have to go inside the card, I think that's going to make a really nice, it's just going to really complete it and then we've got these pieces. So they fit over, that, no that one, no they fit perfect actually, no that is fine, it's the side ones I think we've got to snip a little bit. So I'm just going to tidy off the ends here because you want to stick these down before we actually stick the envelope together. Once we've done that, the rest is really, really easy to do. So now that will stick on the front there and you'll have that border. And I think it looks really nice because you know I like to do borders. I don't just, I don't tend to just do things out of pattern paper at first. I always like to do plain and then do my mats and layers. But these ones, for some reason, yeah, they fit perfectly, but I want to obviously have that border. So if you just bring it down, like so, I'm just going to put a pencil mark there, there, and there. So you're going to have to do a little bit of trimming on the side ones. I'm not too sure why, we, why they've done that. So I just assumed everything would have worked out the same. So if I show you how I do it all, then you'll be able to do the same. Okay, so you can see now what I've done. Just wanted to create a nice border. So now with that piece, I'm just going to sit that over the top of this one. And I'm just going to cut that one away. Perfect, okay. So now we want to stick these on first before we actually attach the whole bag. Okay, and then this piece here, just prepare it for when we go to stick it inside. So you'll see there you'll get a nice border, but I'm going to just bring it up a little bit because mine's coming right down to that score line and I don't want it to be that long. And then I'm going to use this 
as a guide to cut a white piece for inside. So this is going to go inside the actual card, but I want a plain white piece to go inside here so that when this all comes up, isn't that nice? I think that looks really, really pretty. So I'm just going to, yeah, that's all ready to go. I'm just going to grab some white card and I'm just going to mark with a pencil where I need to cut this. So just lay it down there, put a little pencil mark there and then there and then a mark there and there. And I can just get that cut. Okay. So this is where you wanna be. So hopefully by me showing you what I've done there, you should be able to do that yourself. But I've got this, this pattern piece is gonna go inside like this, just to carry on the, you know, the pattern. And then this plain white piece, I'm now going to stick inside here if I flip it over so I haven't got any pencil mark on it. I just think it's nice to have the flowers against white so they really stand out. Okay, so I'm going to keep that piece to one side. Now I'm just going to add some glue to these tabs. And just bring up, just like we would a box, just bring this one around. It's a little bit obviously difficult to get your hand in because of that piece there, but if you've got a ruler or something, you'd rather use that. But you just want to hold that there a minute just so you've got a nice right angle a corner there to the bottom of the envelope. Okay, and do the same on this one here. Just bring it up, just keep your kind of hands in there, pushed in there, or like I said, use a ruler if you can't quite get your hand in. Okay, and now we just want to add some glue so again make sure the base is stuck down perfectly but you just want to add glue um, not right up to the corners just down on the sides here but don't go right up to the top because that will overhang a bit I mean it's all going to get covered with flowers a lot of this so don't worry too much but just bring it up and again keep everything keep your sides nice and straight you want it to all be you know nice right angles here so this is all straight and you kind of have to it is a bit um like i said a bit fiddly but again if you get a ruler push the ruler in push it up as you push your hand down and you'll be able to make sure that's all nice and stuck and there we have it isn't that beautiful i really am pleased with that so what i would suggest now is i mean it's up to you whether you want to add the base now or after you might feel like you want to decorate it like that but I'm going to do my base now and then you can decide how you want to do it this is just a piece of a4 and I'm just folding it in half which is about five and seven eighths of an inch okay just fold and burnish and then you can sit this on the top you want the fold you know obviously to the left and then you can sit this on the top and you should have a little bit that you'll trim off but you can either now with a pencil draw around this or you can stick it on and then cut around it which is what I done and that's what I am going to do so it's entirely up to you now mine is a little bit off um, a little bit too tall at the top so I am just going to just cut a little arch on the top of mine there and that should hopefully yeah there we go perfect so I've just brought it down because I thought it should be the same height. I mean, if you've got a corner rounder, I could have just used that. But now I'm just going to stick mine onto there and then just cut around it. So it's up to you. Trace around it and cut it or do what I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut. So I've got both pieces together. This is a thick 300 GSM. So, you know, this is, you know, two layers that I'm cutting through but these scissors are nice and sharp so they can do it. Okay so there you have it so now that piece will go in here. Look I think it looks really cute like so. What I will do is I am going to grab my little corner rounder here just for the top and I might just tidy up. I don't know if they will go in because I did cut them. Oh yeah, there we go. That's better. 
So you can just tidy them off. Let's do that one as well. Stick that one in there. And then I'll just cut a little square, well not little, but I'll just do like a square piece in here where I can stamp and I've got room to write something. You might want to pop it on that side if you want, but I quite like it in there. It just carries on that pattern throughout. So there is the envelope card. Okay, so hopefully that was straightforward enough, but now it's that fun part of decorating. So I've got some of that um, cellophane. What I might do actually is use this one for the minute. I'll show you, this is how it comes. It's a nice big roll and I'm pretty sure it was the, the pound shop. I can picture it down by all the craft stuff and things. If it wasn't there, it was the works, but I'm, I can, I'm sure I can picture this in the pound shop. So I think they had a stripey one as well, but you get loads of it. Um, and like I said, it's obviously for like wrapping hampers. But I've just cut, you know, a piece there. Play around really. Lay, you need to lay all this down first of all because this is the back and then you're going to build on top of that. I've also gone ahead and already done this one. I've used again one of the wooden with loves that I've used already in this series. I did say that the paper posies was going to be used a lot throughout the Mother's Day series and the papers would look lovely on this kind of project but it's just one of these sticks which I buy Trimcraft I think and um, you can see that's going to kind of, I'll put this probably in last because I want to work the flowers around it, but I don't think I want it as high as that. But you just want to kind of push it in, you know, out like that. As I find with these things, if you play around with them too much, you get frustrated. Whereas if you just shove it in and let's see where it lays, that's probably how it should be. So I'm just going to stick with it like that for. For now I quite like that because you can pull a few bits out as we're sticking everything else to it but you do want to add it's up to you whether you want to put hot glue because it's obviously going to melt so what I'm probably going to do is take that out and add some double-sided tape just like in the back here and just down inside a little bit just so it's got something to grip onto Thing you want is it sliding out so at least now I know that's not going to go anywhere there you go I've got a little bit of a point there a point there and a point there there's the wooden um, shapes there that I've used and then I've just gone and grabbed a load of my paper flowers my artificial flowers leaves die cut leaves I have a lot of things from projects left over like these are all bits that I've just and I think these colors are going to work really well so I did pull out some of my favorites but you just want to start I would say playing around first of all, you know, kind of picture that where you want it to be. I mean, if you're happy to put it in at this point, then you can. I think I'm gonna have it kind of like there. And then you wanna lay your largest down first and then start building everything else on top. And then, you know, the leaves and things like that, you can kind of slot in where, you know, wherever you want to and kind of have them cascading down a little bit. So I'm going to pop this all on high speed now and just enjoy and have some fun.
Okay, so that is what I've done. I really, really like this. And there again, let me just show you mums. I think they're stunning. They are absolutely beautiful cards. So I'm just gonna have with love because I'm not, this isn't gonna be my Mother's Day card because my mum watches my channel and I will make her a card and I will yeah do all that separate. But you can easily put your Happy Mother's Day here. You could have Happy Mother's Day there. You could have Happy Mother's Day inside. But I'm gonna keep this plain because I, can add you know like you can add the number to make it a special birthday so if someone does maybe say to me you know Sam I'd like a card for my my nan's 80th I could you know put 80 there I could have another little kind of you know planter um, stick there with with 80 on it so I can still add to it but I am going to add some of my sparkle using the Spectrum Noir sparkle pen I can't remember which one is my newest because I took the thing off yesterday I think it's this one but just brush it over it goes on darker but then it dries completely clear and your card will go back to its you know original color but it just adds you can put it on anything you know it will take to most surfaces and um, yeah even on the leaves there It actually looks wet more than glittery, but that will all completely dry and you'll be able to see that really nicely in the photos. But you can see just how much shimmer now is on those leaves. I've just covered everything, but I think it looks beautiful. So a huge thank you to my mum, who was today's inspiration. And I know her friend's mum is going to love this. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. And my mum's just used lots of the you know, the, well, she's got paper flowers there. These are silk flowers. Then she's got some die cuts here. These are, again, like little ribbon roses, paper flowers. This is really pretty. These are like some metal, like wired leaves that can bend. Um, there's one down there as well, and she's got some others there. So, you know, have a look at what you've got. And she's finished it with the flower at the top there as well. I think it's just gorgeous so yeah there you have it two very pretty cards I can't wait well I know one of my friends she always comes and just gets loads of cards from me and I think she's going to snap this one up although I'm kind of tempted for the moment to keep it displayed in my room because I really do like that one but anyway there you have it I think they make perfect Mother's Day cards and I hope you agree hope you've enjoyed today as always please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you get to see more fun tutorials and I'll be back again very soon with another video bye